In this video, we're going to look at the distribution of the sample median. Okay, and uh, here we're going to set up our our scenario. We're going to let our data be, follow some f of x, or you know, some function where f is continuous, and our sample is of size n. So our data goes from one to n. Capital F of X is going to be the probability of being less than or equal to that value, which we're, is the cumulative distribution function for F. And we're going to let our YI and YJ be the ith and jth order statistic, where I is less than J and YI is strictly less than YJ. And we can assume that because we're in the continuous case the probability of them equal is zero and so it doesn't factor into the density. So here is the uh, density for the ith order statistic and we're not going to go over how to create that. I'll put that in another video to show how to create uh, the densities for order statistics. And here this is the joint density of yi and yj and this f probably it should have some subscripts yi yj because this f is not the same as the original f so here i put a subscript there i just i forgot so the joint density is this now these these f's and capital f's are exactly what we discussed before this is the, of the original data so now to look at the median, when our sample is odd, we have a middle value, which means that we only have one choice for the median of our sample, and we're going to call that M. So the, the density of M is just the first, den the first density we discussed. It's the ith order statistic with i equal to the middle value. So you plug in n plus 1 over 2 to the e equation 1 above and, and you get this. Now some will write this quantity as, uh, since this is the same as this, it's the middle value, so this is half and this is half, they'll just square this first quantity, but I wrote it out just to be consistent with what I wrote before. For n even, there isn't a middle value, so we have to take the average of the middle two values. And then in order to do that, we need to set up a mapping. So m, which is the what we're interested in, the median of these two middle values, and <clears throat> we're going from R2 space, so we have to map to R2 space, so we create a sort of a dummy variable to find the joint distribution between M and S and then we integrate out S. So in this mapping of the Jacobian ends up being 2 and I always like to find the limits of integration. So in this setting Y N over 2 and Y N over 2 plus 1 the only requirement is that this variable be larger than the other. And I guess technically that should be a dotted line because they can't be equal. Because we're in a continuous distribution setting, the probability that they're equal is zero. So then this line is mapped to this line in M and S space. So to integrate out S, we're going to go from M to infinity. So here is the joint or not the joint, the density of M, which is we're going to integrate out S, which from M to infinity, and here's the joint density. And F is the the the, the density for the two order statistics. So, and then we plug in um, these values, M minus X and S for our variables times the absolute value of the Jacobian, which is 2, and then that boils down to this expression. So let's do an example. 
here we're going to let XI be uniform. And so our mapping becomes this. We want the middle value. And we're going to assume we're in a sample of that's even because if it were odd, then it becomes pretty straightforward what our equation is. Jacobian's 2. So this is the same as before. Now our limits of integration are a little different. Now our order statistics, you know, since we're on the uniform, only go from 0 to 1. So then when we map this to this, you know, we're capped off at this at 1. So when we're integrating out S, we have to consider when it, whether we're below one half or above one half because the limits of integration are a little different. So let's assume n equals 4 and we're below one half. So we're integrating from 2m to 2m of our equation. And then when we're between one half and, and one, then we're integrating from one to m or m to one, and we get this. Now, my notation here is a little silly. I messed up, and you'll see it. When, but when you integrate these out, you end up with this. So this is the density of our sample median. When our data comes from a uniform 0, 1, and our sample size is 4.